Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the tier 7 British destroyer, the Jarvis. Or Jarvis? 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 I don't actually know. Please let me know in the comments. Anyway, she's the tier 7 British destroyer and I think she's actually pretty good. Despite the fact that I kind of complain about her, but considering that she's a tier 7 destroyer, I think she's really excellent because her firepower is pretty decent her concealment is pretty decent she also has uh, well her torpedoes are kind of lacking i wish they had an extra kilometer of range and they're at seven kilometers with 6.3 kilometer concealment so you're losing a good or well you don't really have much margin there i would like to have slightly more but considering that her firepower itself is pretty good well i don't think we can complain too much oh and um she doesn't get the speed boost, but she does get the hydro, that's short range, however, it lasts for a long time, so it is meant to spot torpedoes, which I currently am using it for. She also gets access to seven smoke screens. This is with um, survival with superintendent and uh, the premium consumable. However, those smoke screens are rather short, and I think we will be able to sink this Z23. Considering how low she already is. I can't really see her surviving this one. Well, there she goes, unfortunately. Not mine, but it's okay because we did finish her, which means we can now take this cap zone. And uh, as you all know, capping wins games. As is usual on this map, for some reason the middle of the map is basically empty, so I'll be going over there. Our Nuremberg uh, decided to commit Sudoku because apparently life is too difficult. And uh, I will be able to get the solo cap in that case. And I think our team does actually need to leave the sea cap, considering there are one, two, three, four, five enemies over here, whereas it's only three of us, and one of a, one of us is a destroyer. So we would probably lose pretty hard. And the safest option is to head for the B cap. Right now, there's a Cossack fighting uh, Jarvis. Cossack should win, to be honest, but. For whatever reason, it's not. It doesn't seem to be happening, so I'll try to help a little bit with a smoke screen and uh, firing from smoke because I simply can. Well, never mind. The Jarvis on the enemy team went down, although our, our Cossack also went down, surprisingly. Maybe if I had fired a little better, you know, that could have been prevented, but that's okay. Now I'll get the free B cap instead, so more XP for me. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm playing the ship at this time, it's because when I recorded this match, this is the highest tier British destroyer I had unlocked. Unfortunately, I didn't get the lightning in uh, one of the containers, so I still had to unlock her the normal way. And so I am trying to gather XP as much as possible, and oh my god, that's a battleship. A really close one. Maybe I can torpedo her. I mean, she's coming closer, so... This should be a really easy torpedo salvo. She's not turning. What's going on? Okay, that's fine. I guess. I... I have no real words. I can't really fire on the prediction line though, because... Once the torpedoes get to the Leon, um, you know, she'll either maneuver in some way, or, uh, you know, just the fact that she gets hit by the torpedoes will slow her down. And wow, she she just took four of those. Four. That's insane. I, I, I don't get it. Why would she not react properly? Although I guess she did, you know, at least press the R key. So unfortunately, my torpedoes missed. I do need to learn to play better in that regard. But, um... Our Amagi did finish the job, so I guess there is an undefended Nagato in the middle. I might as well go for her next, right? Especially since it's a stock Nagato, she might not expect me to be there either. So I should be able to seal club her. And um, hopefully that'll um, help me quite a bit. Overall, the game's going really, really well for us. 
yeah, we're gonna lose the C cap, but we're definitely holding the A cap, and you know, it'll take quite a while for the enemy to uh, at least try to threaten the B cap. And uh, perhaps by that time, you know, we will have a more substantial advantage already, so it should be pretty good for us. I mean, think about it this way, right? You can trade your um, HP and ships for map positioning. But you can also do the opposite. You can trade map positioning for HP and ships because remember, running away or defending is easier than attacking, right? Which means that uh, if you are one of those that's defending, it will be easier to um, to take less damage in return. You'll take less damage when fighting the opponent compared to the opponent, right? I mean, that's a good thing. But that only really applies if you're the one running away. If uh, you are chasing, you know, the opposite is true. Yeah, that Nagata doesn't seem to uh, be doing anything, so she's gonna have a really bad time in a moment. Hmm, should I fire on her? Nah, guess not. Yep, this Nagata is gonna take all of those torpedoes, I think. Well, too bad that she got hit right before she, uh, she got hit by somebody else right before my torpedoes arrived. I would have got a bit more damage otherwise, but I guess that's okay. I did still get the devastating strike, so I can't exactly complain. Well, the plan now is to just sit here and perhaps threaten the uh, Galissonier. Maybe even open up on her with my um, main batteries because at this point the game's pretty much in the bag. I, I really don't see how we're, we would potentially lose this. And at this point it's all about maximizing XP for me. Although I do have to be a bit very of the um, Fiji and Pinsoigen in front of me. They might open up on me one at one point because everybody loves shooting destroyers. Okay. Oh, I don't actually remember whether uh, running aground here was intended or not. It might not have been. Well, the ship has an obscene fire chance, so... Starting a lot of fires is also quite normal on the ship. And uh, there goes the cruiser. And... I guess I don't have to fire on anyone. Yeah, those Fiji shells weren't even close to me. And it does seem that they really want to fire up on me. But, uh... I want to fire on them too. And this island should at least cover me a little bit. Come on. No? Okay. Well, that's a bit of a snafu, but it's okay. I'll go cap the sea cap after this. Well, at least the islands did protect me from torpedoes, I suppose. I might have run into them otherwise. But this should be my thir third solo cap this game, so you can expect a ton of XP this match, which is great because this should be my last match in the Jarvis, and I should be able to unlock the lightning after this. And I guess I'll just try to take most of the cap, smoke in the middle of the cap zone and start opening up on that Scharnhorst. I do fire the torpedoes, perhaps the Scharnhorst turns this way and runs into them, but... You know, it's just... It's just fishing, you know, it might not happen at all. But since I don't have any use for those torpedoes anyway, it doesn't exactly matter what I do with them. Okay, yeah, the Schadenhurst is turning away, there's no way my torpedoes do anything, but I should be able to deal some damage and perhaps get my 100k this game. Hopefully. Come on. Come on. 3,835. Come on. Oh, I did deal damage this time. Okay, 2,700 to go. 469 to go. Come on, 469. 
Okay, got the capstone, but the game's pretty much over. Oh, I got the fire. Yep, that's a, that's over a hundred, hundred thousand. Excellent. Very good game, I guess. Despite the fact that I only sank one ship, I mean, I got three solo caps. And I got that devastating strike and over 100k damage in a tier 7 destroyer. Can't exactly complain. Matchmaking was pretty generous, though, because it's a tier 8 match. So, not that difficult. And there's a thousand points. Isn't that nice? So, 106k damage, 21,706 XP. This is with lots of those special flags. 2,128 base XP, while number 2 is at 1144. I'm almost twice as high as the second one on our team. Second one is a tier 6 one too, that's why I complimented her. I mean, look, if the enemy La Galicine were on our team, or were on the winning team, she would have got over 1400 base XP. Meanwhile, the enemy team, or our team, second got 1100. That's quite something. Nagato, 35k, 47k on the Leon, 10k on the Scharnhorst. A bit on the cruiser and a bit on the destroyer. And here you can see my enormous list of uh, flags and um, camo and all those things. And now it's back to port to use my XP to buy or unlock the lightning. And then I will actually equip her too. Because this video will be to be continued after this. I will equip the lightning and... Um, Next video will be of the lightning, which is right, you know, at the end of this video I'll press the play, play button and the next video will start from that moment, more or less. So anyways, if you don't want to watch how I equip the ship, uh, I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Cheeto Freak, and I hope I'll see you guys next time. Wondering which captain to pick for the um, lightning, because as far as I remember, lightning doesn't require expert marksman you know she has enough rudder shift time so i'll i'll make a quick check for that after i pick the um, dasha for the captain obviously let's see artillery yep nine second 180 degrees which means expert marksman is completely unnecessary okay um yeah i guess let's uh, retrain the captain start retraining Use the 200,000 credits for it. Come on, Arun, click the button. Please. Please. Okay. Don't click away. Continue, please. Nope, wrong button. You need to press the plus button. Okay. Now we use Captain Elite Ca Commander XP to finish it. Now we go priority target, last stance. Uh, now I check whether uh, what the range is, 12.2 kilometers. That's pretty good, so we're going uh, superintendent. Because uh, that's going to be necessary. And then concealment expert, and that's all 10 points. So now let's equip upgrades. Obviously concealment. Um, let's check what the rudder shift is, 5.3. With the uh, hull it's 3.8, so we're taking rudder shift. Well, Apparently, there's no option anyway. You can't take uh, acceleration on the British destroyers because they have the acceleration anyway. Into the second slot, we take hydro. Third slot is going to be what's the anti air like? 15, 13, 14. Yeah, that's really weak. What's with the upgrade? 15, 13, 37, 14. Yeah, that's kind of mediocre. Not sure what to take there. Let's go with main armaments here. And I guess we're gonna go with, uh, yeah, this one is worthless. It's either dispersion or the anti-air guns. And I can't really decide. Both are kind of eh. But let's go with anti-air because destroyers are accurate enough anyway. Now let's, uh, you know, let's put on uh, premium consumables. Obviously for the credits. And I guess I should pre-XP the hull, right? 
I mean, I have 860,000 free XP. And I have all the free XP uh, ships. So might as well, I guess. Yep, let's put the community contributor come on. And now let's put on all the flags. Wow, the game is lagging quite a bit at this point. Look, look how long it takes for the flag to equip. So we're gonna go speed flag, uh, faster consumable reload. We're gonna go fire chance flags. The ship has a very good fire chance, by the way. Then obviously the red dragon flag, um, and I'll take the other XP flags too. Although here I don't take all of them. I I don't take one of them, I think. Uh, later, you know, in the next games, I equip both, I unequip both of the uh, fire chance flags and go with XP flags instead, because it's just faster to get to, get to the Yutland that way. And I guess I'll take this one off and put one more flag on. And then there's one XP flag left, which I don't take this time, but in the future I do. And this is the ship equipped. Oh yeah, contribute the flag this one too. And now let's check what the per- Wow, 5.5 kilometer concealment? That's very good. And I guess I should take the hull. The range upgrade isn't as important, I think. I mean, the hull gives maneuverability, survivability. Why does it give extra torpedoes? I didn't actually check what that means. But, eh, whatever. And there's the hull, and let's go battle.